Welcome to the Inside Digital Transformation Podcast. Inside Digital Transformation explores how organizations of every size and shape are using technology today to survive and thrive in the face of relentless change. If you are a business or technology leader charged with making the most of digital transformation in your organization, then this podcast is for you. And now here's your host, Alan Bernard, a technology journalist, editor, and copywriter who has been covering the intersection of business and technology for over two decades. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. In this episode, I'm speaking with PwC's cloud and digital lead, Cenk Ozdemir, about how to maximize cloud ROI in a constantly shifting technology landscape. Given that we are in the midst of a cloud-driven enterprise application modernization phase, to get the most ROI from cloud, you have to revisit your cloud strategy with a holistic, all-of-the-above mindset. It is no longer about lifting and shifting workloads just to cut cost, but leveraging the inherent business benefit cloud brings to the table. Cenk, thank you for your time. Thanks for being on the call. Hey, Alan. Thanks for the invitation. Excited to be here. So, um, you know, today we're talking about cloud ROI. Obviously, this is an ongoing discussion, right? Um, In C-suites and boardrooms across the country all the time, right? Um, So, you know, what I'm curious about is, you know, when, when cloud started with AWS, uh, you know, what, 16 years ago now. I mean, really started. It was around before that, but not in not in the, you know, the hyperscaler form that it is today. You know, the big reason to go to cloud was cost, right? Or at least that was initially how a lot of people thought about it. We're going to go to cloud, we're going to save a bunch of money. That really hasn't happened. You know, cloud is more expensive in the long run as opposed to on-prem, depending on the application, obviously, right? And so I'm kind of curious, how are people looking at cloud today? Or how are people defining ROI today? Since you can't just simply say, oh, we're gonna go to the cloud and cut 50% of our IT budget and away we go. So Alan, very good question. I mean, the cloud journey has been around for a while, but it is changing direction, right? You know, the way at PwC, we define the cloud journey is in four steps. First, you do a strategy. What that strategy means is which applications and which data should reside in what type of cloud, right? Mm -hmm. What should Mm -hmm. be in the public cloud? What should be in the edge? What should be in a private cloud? And some cases, what should be on-premise? So that's the first step. Step one is the strategy. Step two is the migration, where you move the applications and data to the cloud. Mm -hmm. Step three is once you have everything up there or a good percentage of your IT has stayed up there, now you have things, two things to think about. One is, how do I take the existing you know, applications and data and tie them to services in the cloud? You know, all hyperscalers or CSPs provide, when you look at their catalogs today, you'll see 200 plus services each. Mm-hmm. Some of them are technical, purely technical in terms of size, scaling, all that. Others are functional. Uh, So your step three is what we call modernization, which is how do I take the existing legacy applications and let's call it legacy data for a second and modernize them by using the microservices or services in the cloud. We call that packaged innovation. You know, all the hyperscalers have tons of engineers. They created these services for you to be able to, let's say I have a legacy application. I want an IoT enabled, right? Now Mm -hmm, I can take that IoT service on the cloud that I am and immediately connect to that. So that second step is modernization. And then the last step, which should be parallel to modernization is cloud native development or cloud native uh, applications, right? Which means that let's say I have a front office, middle office application I've been using for 10, 20, 30 years. If I want to rewrite that application, I'm going to write that in cloud-friendly or cloud-native technology. So, so Mm -hmm. Alan, why am I talking about these four steps? If you think about this one, two, three, four, right? Strategy, migration, modernization, and cloud-native development with the last two could be in parallel. What happened in the cloud journey is in cloud 1.0, a lot of companies took advantage of the infrastructure savings initially, Mm -hmm. as well as the infrastructure flexibility, agility, and scalability, okay? And in some cases, a lot of companies actually step number, you know, skipped step number one, the strategy, 
Right. Okay. So that is issue number one on in terms of the cloud ROI. When when you talk to a CIO or a CTO, and when they say I'm not, you know, driving value out of the cloud, which was pretty evident in our cloud survey, we just completed. One of the mm-hmm. reasons yeah. for that is number one, we moved the applications and data to the cloud, but we have not really taken advantage of that modernization and or cloud native. So the true business case, the true benefits back to the business, we haven't gotten there yet, okay? So what we're seeing right now is that we consider the current phase, the cloud 2.0, where a lot of the companies are stepping back and say, now that I moved myself to the cloud, am I getting value out of it? Mm-hmm. And a lot of that value discussion could also be related to the fact that a lot of the capital expenditures, the CapEx have been converted to OpEx already, mm-hmm. you know, off the balance sheet to the p and Right. And now, you know, there's some prediction that the, the, the cloud costs might be going up. And in some cases, uh, you know, the companies may have over-purchased consumption that they're not using. So the mm-hmm. issue mm-hmm. is... The, the next next generation of value from the cloud is going to come in that what we call beyond migration step, which is how do I take things, the application and data, and drive value either through the modernization or cloud native steps. So, so let me pause right there. So the four steps of the cloud journey and then the cloud 1.0 versus 2.0 that we consider ourselves in. Uh, that is the value equation. The value equation has changed from infrastructure savings to how do we use the cloud to drive business value? But it seems to me that second question, how to use cloud to drive business value, has been a high level priority for some time. And after 15 years of people adopting cloud, that's, I don't know, I, it seems like that has to be part of the math today. And it just can't be all about infrastructure. Hundred percent, and that's why uh, that's why the, the struggle around value is is kept live because of this issue, which is being in the cloud. You know, taking you know running applications in in containers and moving data mm-hmm. to the cloud has yeah. significant benefits, but it is not the end of the value equation. Right. Okay. You you got to modernize. I mean, there are so many technologies available by the hyperscalers. If you want to start a video streaming business today, they will give you the infrastructure for it. So right. it's not just technical capabilities. If you want to get your uh, truck fleet in the market, and if you mm-hmm. want to track and create analytics data, their movements, and you know optimize their routes, those are already available services. Right. You know what I'm saying. So there's so much of that available out there. Uh, I, you know, what we tell our clients is that in some cases, you may want to go back and do the strategy now. You know, almost like you go from step two. Back mm-hmm. to step one and figure out. The, the other change, Alan, is that um, we also have the development of, uh, you know, edge computing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and because of that, you know, now you have to think about, you know, should some of my computing assets be sitting on the edge closer to either my stores, closer to my sales force, closer mm-hmm. to my, re- you know, retail force. Right. So. So that is also changing the equation in terms of the, the the topology of the cloud, right? Right, the physical, the architecture. Of, the physical of, architecture, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm a little stuck on the business value because you know if it was because if it's just an infrastructure play for most companies to this day, then that's just a cost play. The next generation of value out of the cloud is no longer the infrastructure cost. That is already in the books. Okay. The, the next okay. business value is. Let's say, pick any industry. Let's say I sell to wholesalers. Now I want to go to direct to consumer. Yep. Okay. Could be in any in many industries, right? Now, how am I going to go direct to consumer? That is a new channel. That is a new business mm-hmm. alongside with my legacy business. So to be able to do that, let's call it a business. We call it the business model reinvention, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yep. To be able to execute that, I'm going to have to use the capabilities of the cloud. Now, I'm going to have to figure out how to build that business. So right. the point I'm raising here is that the next 
wave of value generation out of the cloud is going to be in those new business models, okay? And it could be in the shape of a brand new greenfield business that you want to mm-hmm. get in. Yeah. Or yeah. it could be in the field of, you know, I got a 40-year-old process slash system architecture mm-hmm. that I've been using. You know, you hear all these stories about, oh, we got systems. We don't even know who can change them. <laughs> yeah. People have retired. This is actually a very prevalent issue yeah. for front office and middle office. So the next generation value is, let's say you want to change that process, improve it and rewrite it. You're going to have to go to cloud native. Yeah, I think banking would be a great industry to use. That is that. a great industry. Right. If you are if you want to get into online banking, you're going to be, have to be on the cloud and use cloud native technologies. If you want to reinvent your existing systems and you're going to have to be on the cloud. So that's but, but, you really, have, but you have to hold on to your legacy stuff too, because that's the backbone of the financial industry is mainframes and legacy, right? I mean- so you have to have this hybrid environment, but to do something new with, say, apps, right? You're probably going to want to move that, 100%. that portion of it to the cloud. That front end has got to sit on the cloud somewhere because you can't scale it otherwise. 100%. And, and, okay. and even, Alan, the discussion of legacy is also changing, right? The whole idea around private cloud mm-hmm. is it will continue to be relevant. It would be a percentage of the overall architecture and enterprise computing going forward. That whole stems from the idea of any company should have a very strong cloud strategy today. And this cloud strategy is not a pure technical strategy. It's a combination of business strategy and technical Mm -hmm. strategy. You need to be very clear on where you're going to execute processes and what kind of technical architecture has to support it. Certain things, you know, if you have a lot of data that you want to keep, you know, that is very expensive to store in the cloud. Maybe you should put them on your private cloud, a private mm-hmm. architecture, okay? Right. And w- if you want to have some fast processing that's done on a device, let me give you an example. If you want to use computer vision in your supply chain, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, when somebody's putting together an assorted order, if you want to use computer vision, the best place to process that is near that operation yeah, in the, the edge. The edge, right? right? Yeah. Yep. Not, not, not in the cloud, and it's too latent and all that. So the the other thing is that, um, you know, in the last year or so, the hyperscalers are making their software available for you to run in your own data center. Mm-hmm. Okay, which is a new mm-hmm. technology; it didn't exist before. So you're technically running your own data center at a different cost structure, but still, you know, let's say you're using hyperscaler A Mm -hmm. for your public cloud, your your local installation, your private cloud looks like an extension of it. Right. Because they are now all enabling you to run their software in your data center. So there's very, let's call it innovative uh, architectures available in the market today not only between the hyperscalers, but also the third-party providers Mm -hmm. all around data analytics and AI that you can put together to have this seamless cloud architecture. So so the issue is coming back to, like, if you're in the cloud, and, you know, our survey said majority of the companies are on Mm -hmm. the cloud, but they haven't really activated those next-gen steps. Or maybe, you know, this is a very good time when, you know, Gen AI is out, you know, new technologies, industry capabilities are out in the cloud. This might be a good time for everyone to step back and say, hey, let me refresh my cloud strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, what does it look like in the next six months to three years? Uh, So so that's one of the things we're recommending heavily to our clients. It's taken a lot of uh, time of our discussions to say, you know, refresh your strategy and drive more value out of the cloud, modernize, look at cloud native, but when you look at cloud native, you're also looking at the next gen business processes, you know, data driven Mm -hmm. insights. You're looking at gen AI on how to bring gen AI into your own operations. I'm not Mm -hmm. talking about the public gen AI, right? Uh, So it's, I mean, technically it's a very, uh, very exciting time for, uh, for us as technology and cloud professionals uh, from a consultant standpoint. So let's talk about the the cloud business survey because I found it interesting that um, 
you know, you say that more than half, well, this is from an, the email exchange that we had, so I'm not quite sure if it's directly in the survey, but you say over half of the executives have yet to realize substantial value from their cloud investment. And so it seems like a pretty high number to me. So I was just wanted to see if you could maybe shed some light on that. It's it's really not, not surprising, right? Uh, when you look at the pandemic, right? A lot of the companies found themselves in, in two predicaments. One is, how do I enable my workforce to quickly work remotely? And if you were on the cloud or cloud versions of collaboration tools, you did that instantly. Right. A lot of the you know consulting companies lost no beat because they were already on these type of tools. The second one was many companies had tried to find new channels and customers because either their main channel was disrupted because of supply chain issues and other issues, mm -hmm. and or they realized that their business model had to change. So if you were on the, you know, on, on the cloud already, you had no lost time, okay? So, so that's what, I mean, we see in the survey, survey basically said that, you know, if you're a cloud powered company, which is, what does that mean? These companies that are cloud powered are already in cloud 2.0. They're constantly thinking about modernization. They're constantly thinking about business model reinvention. They're constantly thinking about transformation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they're basically seeing cloud as a part of that transformation agenda, an architecture, a tool to transform themselves. Okay. You know, for example, if you want to get into a new business, technically you can build that application yourself run it on your own data centers. And I mean, technically, right? Yeah, right? But they understand the fact that cloud has so much capability. Taking a cloud native approach and maximizing that capability to transform or build new businesses is the highest ROI. So that is, uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's a huge difference between how do I add more to my legacy environment because mm -hmm. it's a depreciated asset slash we know how to run it. Because that option still exists. for oh, and it's, Most organizations are running so, so hybrid the, infrastructures the, 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 today. This right? is exactly what the, when we talk about that cloud power, it is not, the, the discussion is not how do I, you know, add more to my existing estate. Mm -hmm. It is about how do I use the latest technology to take me to the next level of innovation. Okay. And that may be a combination of legacy and hybrid. And That's rate. exactly right. So, so, so this is a different way of thinking. It's even okay. a different way of thinking about ERPs and how all that stuff. Mm -hmm. This is, right. this is, you know, the future of the cloud. It's not a single architecture. It's going to be a hybrid architecture of different technologies, mm -hmm. and it's going to be evolving. That's the mindset. Okay, and once you have that mindset, then you force yourself to be in that leading edge. And that's how you start driving more value out of, you know, how you think of the future. And you're also, uh, frankly, future-proofing yourself mm -hmm. to the next level, Hopefully. Uh, which makes you a little bit easier to exit the more legacy technologies over mm -hmm. time. Yeah, jettisoning the technical debt issue, right? Uh, that can weigh down any initiative or any new innovative thinking within an organization, right? Yeah, I mean, the other thing, Alan, is that, I mean, in the cloud survey, you're going to find out that, um, let's say I'm a company that's in the cloud. Hey, I, I we're 90% in the cloud. Well, what does that mean? We moved our applications, right? And they're still running in containers and emulators. Mm -hmm. They're still running close to what they were running. The data is up there, too. What, what these cloud-driven companies do is that because they, they're a cloud-first approach, they have also built capabilities, skills, and most importantly, mm -hmm. engineering capabilities mm -hmm. right. in-house or with partnership with consulting firms. Because one of the things you're going to find out is that one of the, the, the barriers of driving value out of the cloud on being cloud-native and modernizing is do you have the skill sets? Right. Yeah. And what is that skill set? Well, that skill set's pretty clear. It's engineering. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 different forms of engineering. It's software engineering. It SREs. could be product engineering, hardware plus software, mm -hmm. and UI and you know human design. So so what you're going to find out is that when you double click on it a little bit more, those uh, you know when we say these 
you know, cloud power companies, they not only think of the cloud as an innovation vehicle, new customers and channels, but they're also building capabilities. They're building architecture capabilities. They're building solution architects. They're building engineering organizations. So, so the skills are also a big part of the, the, you know, how do you drive value out of the cloud as well? Right. It's an enabler of innovative thinking at this point is kind of how I see it. Uh, it's no longer an afterthought. It's one of the first things that you that comes to mind is how can we leverage technology to do X, Y, and Z? Not how do we support what we're going to do with technology, right? Do you know, do you see the difference? I'm, I'm the I don't 100%, but let me, let, me, uh, let me take that to the next phase, right? Okay. And I'll, I'll use Gen AI as an example. Mm -hmm. So technology capability has increased so much in the last 10, 15 years. Technology was an enabler of whatever you're trying to do. Now, in some cases, it's actually driving. It's yes. not enabling, it's driving. Yes. Like there you go. the Gen AI discussion today we have with our clients is that it's not like, hey, I have this and can I enable? It's it's like, yeah. it's driving what I can do, which is yeah. kind of a reverse process. So, and now cloud is coming at full force in this value cycle, which is gonna, again, the business model reinvention is gonna force that. And then there's brand new technologies becoming prevalent like Gen AI, Mm -hmm. we're in a massive enterprise computing upgrade cycle. Um, and, and that's what's exciting. But at the same time, it's going to create a lot of, let's call it planning cycles and strategy cycles, because, you know, this is a very good time to step back and say, like, wh what does my next few years look like in my architecture applications, data, business processes, AI, and then how do you bring them all together to drive more value in relation to cost? So that is an interesting area where when we talk to our clients, because of all the geopolitical issues and economic issues, this is kind of staying in the background, mm -hmm. but that technology enabling and driving discussion is going to come back to this whole cycle. If you are making, if, if technology is making decisions or at least kind of forcing your hand a little bit in decision-making, what does that do to the ROI equation? Because then you're making decisions that maybe you're not ready to make. Maybe you're, you don't want to be on leading edge in your industry, right? But you can't follow too far behind. This is a very good time to look at your overall strategy. Uh, all right. Okay. Back to the top. What we're talking you know, about. You, you, yeah, it's a sure. great time because, and, and have a holistic strategy. A lot of this stuff is not technical, but, but, but so, so the point I'm trying to raise here is that as much as it's getting complicated, uh, the, the solution is not that complicated. You got to step back and look okay. at all of these okay. things and say, yep. and again, in the, in the survey, what you're going to see is that controls and compliance, trust are becoming very important components of technology. Well, I think, I mean, as far as ROI concern, you know, if you look at, um, I think technology cost discussion is going to be a difficult discussion for, for most companies, especially mm -hmm. in the current economic environment for a few years or however long it lasts, right? Right, in terms of value, not just bottom in, line. In terms really. of value. So, so but, yeah. but it's going to, it, there is going to be a cost discussion. You're going to hear this for quite a while because of the fact that, you know, we're in a transition state of technology from legacy to new technologies. We're in the right in the middle of that. On the value side, I think there is going to be an acceleration of value, especially from this transformation and business model reinvention standpoint mm -hmm. by leveraging cloud, cloud native, third party and hybrid architectures. Mm -hmm. Okay. What that also means is that a lot of companies should be looking at their future architecture, make sure that it is not complex. Because one risk that I see, you know, I've been in the tech consulting business for 30 years. Mm. You know, this is now that a lot of our clients are creating their future architectures. Okay. It is very easy to recreate the complexity of legacy in the cloud. Okay. Okay. So, so that is something so, so that a lot that, of companies what does, have. To, what does that mean? 
That means that you know you're going from a currency current architecture to the new architecture. You need to think about how to uh, keep that simple, efficient. You know your integration layers, um, how many partners you work with. Let me give you an example. What we see at PwC is a hybrid cloud feature, meaning that mm -hmm. most of our clients will be on more than one hyperscaler. Oh, the multi-cloud, yeah. Multi-cloud. And then there's another hybrid, there's types of hybrid, right? When you sure. talk about cloud, sure. it's different cloud providers. And then the second type of hybrid is edge, public, private, mm -hmm. and legacy all together. So that architecture has to be thought through because you know going to the cloud is not gonna be a simplification unless you plan for it. You know, Think about this. Now I'm gonna have to deal with multi-cloud operations. With between different, I have to deal with multi-cloud syncing. Right. I have yeah. to be able to sync data across mm -hmm. ERP, cloud, third-party providers, data lakes. All so so the point is a part of that value equation is, you know, how do you get the most value? One, you you upgrade your uh, middle and back office applications in the best way possible. And one of the things we recommend our clients is this is a good time to take customizations out. Okay, we call it fit to standard. Take the version of the ERP, take all the customizations out as much as you can. Keep the ones that are mission critical slash competitive. So for the biz apps, simplify the biz apps. Okay, for cloud and data, study your architecture very well. Think about the simplification of that architecture, maximize the cloud capabilities and cost based on your transformation and innovation agenda. And on data analytics and AI, maximize the capability. And even AI itself now needs a strategy between functional and industry AI versus gen AI. And in most cases, we're recommending our clients to blend the two together, two types of AI, if you will, if those were the terms. Um, and come up with that strategy. So that would be the ultimate value out of the future computing platform, both between the biz apps and the cloud data and analytics. Uh, so it's not just one application or the other, it's not one cloud native or the other, but it's looking at holistically and planning it up front. Okay. And then that's gonna get you to the best ROI. That will get you to the best ROI because, again, if you don't recognize that this is a big tech uh, transition cycle, you're going to do that ROI discussion one at a time, and most likely you're going to lose the big picture of that. Right. What is my future you know, value out of my enterprise architecture on both business processes and technology is the key question. Right. Yeah, it's the idea of like the product mindship. A uh, product mindset shift, right? As well, that's 100%. going on. Yeah, hundred okay. percent. Okay, all right. Well, uh, Jank, thank you. Um, we're on the hour, so I don't. I want to be respectful of your time. This is a great conversation, so I really appreciate it. Well, Alan, I appreciate the time. I mean, frankly, this. Uh, I mean, a lot of these things we talked about is changing every three months. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the everything I talked about is changing every three months. New capabilities right. come in. I mean, just. This, this Gen AI thing is just an example, but because right. that was a more public example, mm -hmm. but there is sure. examples like this that are profoundly new are coming up every three months. So um, I, I think the best way for our clients to think about this is a the cloud discussion as well as the enterprise tech discussion is now a continuum. If you like this episode, please tell your friends and check out our other shows. You can find Inside DT on all the major hosting platforms, including Apple, Amazon, Spotify, and Google. Talk to you soon.